Into the summer we go and into another international tournament, of course. It's the Gold Cup this summer and we've got the preliminaries and my predictions and they're coming at you next. That's right, folks. Back with my prediction video today. We're looking forward to the Concacaf Gold Cup. That's right. It is the preliminaries. Uh, the trying to uh, make up the last three nations to join uh, the already existing nations for this year's Gold Cup taking place in the summer. What is the Gold Cup? Well, we'll take a little look about that in just a second. Of course, if you're new, though, where you've been, smash your subscribe and bang to all things Rovers related, Gold Cup related, world football related. We're going to all here, boys. Under one Ruski, that's right. Of course, the likes of the USA, Canada, Mexico await uh, um, <coughs> some of these winners. <coughs> <coughs> so the likes of Canada, USA and Mexico uh, are waiting uh, in the wings here for the winners of these, uh, these qualifiers uh, to see who will join them in this summer's uh, spectacular, of course. Uh, it is uh, represented by CONCACAF Nations, and I think there's a guest or two in there. Uh, we'll, we'll preview the tournament in all its glory when, of course, we know the final teams. But right here, right now, we're going to predict those last uh, handful of games to see who will be in the final. So uh, for some of you guys out there, this video will be a pleasant surprise because this is probably the last time you see me until the end. Uh, because the graphics just take up the whole screen. I can't be in it. I can't, I'm not going to be in it, so we're going to have to miss this face. So please let me know that you missed this face down below. But anyway, let's get cracking and uh, talk about it. It's the Gold Cup. Where am I? Where's Dirk gone? I want to see Dirk. Well, I am here. I'm still here, but I'm just, I'm going to go away because it's better for me to be heard and not seen unless something crazy happens. So let's get into it. Of course, the Gold Cup, of course, here we go. Uh, we are talking about these uh, respected games that are, oh, these are the respective nations that are still left in the mix. So these, of course, are what, four, eight, 12 nations. Only uh, three of them, though, go through. So, um, of course, these are gonna be the games to talk about. So let's get cracking and have a little look at uh, the games themselves. It all off at the tip of the top of the shop there. It is Trinidad Tobago. They're going to be taking on Guadalupe, of course. Now these games are taking place on the 16th and the 17th of June. That's right. Uh, am I going to do a watch along? I don't know. I don't, I have no clues uh, on the 16th. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe because the uh, the Nations League is the day before. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Uh, probably not though. But uh, kicking it all off with Trinidad Tobago up against <coughs> everyone's favourite Guadalupe. Of course, Angus Eve is the uh, the manager of Trinidad Tobago uh, up against Guadalupe, managed by Joclin and Gloma. Of course, taking place at the DRVPNK Stadium, wherever that is. Uh, of course, now these two sides, according to my data, uh, have not played each other uh, in the past, which I which I find quite extraordinary. Uh, but TT coming to this on the back of 50% form, uh, one two lost to and drawn two over the last six. Guadalupe coming to this also on 50% form, winning three and losing three, heading into this last match. Though Guadalupe uh, played was a one 0 loss to Cuba. They haven't actually scored a goal in the last two games, uh, so they're coming to this looking for goals. On the flip side, Trinidad Tobago coming to this scoring four goals in the last two games. They picked up a one more draw against Nicaragua uh, in the uh, in the Nations League, which of course ended. Um, uh, not in the, the right hands, of course. Again, got no odds on this one, so we are we are having a having a stab at we stab in the dark. But I'm going to go with my gut on this one. My gut says a victory. Uh, I'll just uh, let me fully explain what goes on here. So we are talking about the Trinidad uh, game against Guadalupe. The winner will go through to here, and of course, we'll take on the winner of this game. So just, just again. Uh, so anyway, uh, I'm going to go with my gut on this first game with Trinidad Tobago up against Guadalupe. I'm going to pick a. a, 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 a Comfortable, comfortable two to win for, of course, TT. Uh, and, of course, they'll be uh, going through to the next stage, of course. Next up, we do have... Okay, next up for us, it will be Guyana up against Grenada. Of course, this is this game down here to play the winner of the Trinidad-Tobago, uh, of course, Guadalupe match. Of course, now these two sides, again, uh, according to my data, have played each other just one time since 2012. We'll talk about that shortly. Michael Johnson is the manager for Guyana. He comes from Jamaican uh, descent. Up against Michael Finley, of course, managing Grenada. Nada, of course, taking us at the DLVP NK Stadium. Again, they played each other just the one time since 2012. It was a victory for Grenada. It was a 2 1 win way back when. Of course, going to get Guyana, though, coming into this on the back of a 58% form, uh, just two defeats the past six. I'm against Grenada or Grenada, uh, coming at you with a 17% form without a win in the last six. Four defeats, a couple of draws as well. That 2 1 win was way back in November 2012. 
It was in the Caribbean Cup, second round, Group 6, baby. Uh, Guyana, though, coming to on the back of a 2 0 win of a Montserrat, back to back. Uh, clean sheets for them up against Grenada side who do come into this on the back of a 7-1 drop-in by the United States. How good are Grenada or how good are Guyana? To be honest with you, I don't bloody know. And I'm a little bit worried of what I predicted here. I'm going to go with a 1-0 win. I'm happy, I'm happy with that. With Guyana, they'll go through, believe it or not, to take on Trinidad Tobago. In the next one, next, of course, we do have Martinique taking on St. Lucia. Now, I believe this is the, the, the flag. It may have been replaced. I don't know. Or... Uh, any any folks from Martinique or any uh, CONCACAF experts correct me if I'm wrong about this flag because I'd like to get the right flag in for the actual Gold Cup but anyway that takes place at the DRVPNK Stadium it's Martinique up against St. Lucia that's right Martinique managed by Mario Bocale up against St. Lucia managed by Stern Bloody John the, the Trinidad Tobago sensation uh, I think he played in the Premier League for Fulham correct me if I'm wrong never played each other these two sides according to my eyes and again not too sure about that data but Martinique without a win in the last six 8% form for them up against the St. Lucia side who of course 92% for winning five of the last six uh, of course heading in to this one of course uh, but Martinique picking up a 2-1 loss to Costa Rica most recently that's back in it must have been a narrow loss there uh, whereas Solicia picking up a 3-1 win over Dominica way back in of course 27th of March on this one it is a tight one to call this one but I am actually going to back uh, uh, St. Lucia to lose this um despite uh, Martinique's coming in this with a heavy, heavy uh, bad run of form. I think because they were in a higher group in the Nations League, that may have had significant uh, effect to their to their form heading into this. Next, of course, we have Suriname taking on, of course, Puerto Rico coming at you on the 17th of June. Now, these two sides that play each other. Again, never, according to my eyes, at the DRV PNK Stadium. Suriname managed by Dean Gore, ex-QPR man. Yep, test my knowledge, baby. Up against Puerto Rico and, of course, managed by Carlos Garcia Gantanano, of course. Puerto Rico, 100% form for them right now, uh, winning six on the bounce. Up against the Suriname side, just one win in six. 25% form for them heading into this. Uh, of course, Suriname's last match was a 2 loss against Mexico. Um, of course, and yeah, again, top division in the nation's league. There ain't no slouches. Puerto Rico maybe punching above, uh, not punching above their weight, but kind of, um, you know, uh, in a division that's that's too weak for them. So they are flexing their muscles, scoring. They scored what 11, uh, 14 goals in the last three games combined. So I think they're they've had it easy. Uh, I think they're going to get a bit of a, bit of a welcome, a, wait, a wake up call here in these uh, Gold Cup semi final preliminaries. Uh, with a take on Suriname. Suriname, of course, lost to Mexico and Puerto, Puerto Rico with a 5 1 win over Cayman Islands. Uh, I'm back in Suriname and back in big as well. 3 0 win for them, comfortably through to take on, of course. Who was it in the first one? Uh, uh, Martinique or whatever. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I can't remember now. Uh, yeah, Martinique. And next up, of course, we have uh, Curacao up against St. Nitz. And Nevis, of course, that's on the 16th of June, coming out at the DRVP NK Stadium. And it's, of course, Remco Becinti is, of course, your manager for Curacao. Austin Huggins is your manager for St. Kitts and Nevis. Again, they haven't played each other according to my eyes, which I find absolutely mind-boggling. Uh, but Curacao coming to this, oh, and another heavy run here. Five defeats on the spin, 17% form for them. Up against the St. Kitts and Nevis side. Unbeaten the last four. Momentum is key, of course. Three wins in the last four games. Uh, of course, draw is the other game. They did beat Aruba most recently, 2 win for them. In fact, they scored five goals in the last two games combined. However, uh, Curacao putting themselves up against some real big opposition, playing the World, World Cup winners uh, just the other day, 20, uh, 28th of March, uh, or not the other day, a few months back. 7-0 win it was for Argentina. In fact, they haven't scored a goal in the last two games. Uh, a, a consecutive run of one, two, three, four, five defeats. Uh, not many goals scored in that, but they are playing decent uh, caliber opposition. I think they should have it still enough in the tank to beat uh, uh, St. Kitts and Nevis in this one, despite uh, the opposite, the away side's uh, good bit of form. 3-1 win for me for Curacao. They'll go through to the final preliminary match up against these boys, whoever it may be. So let's take a scary long look at this bad boy as we look forward to that game. And then wrap it up, wrap it up. It's a French Guyana taking on St. Martin, that's right. Uh, of course, French Guyana married by Thierry Deneuf. Uh, St. Martin, no idea. No idea who's managing this, this team uh, heading into this uh, uh, of course, a uh, big time Gold Cup qu uh, qualifier. Uh, French guy on just one defeat past six, 67% form for them right now. St. Martin also coming into this on one defeat past six, 67% form for them heading into this. Again, no, never played each other, according to my eyes. Uh, on the 17th of June, St. Martin, though, did pick up a 2 1 win over US Virgin Islands most recently. They also picked up a 6 1 win over Bonaire. So, eight goals scored in the last two games. French Guyana, of course, better opposition, better quality. 
losing to Guatemala 4-0 last time around. So we'll see what team shows up. So big wins, though, in uh, St. Martin's track record. Uh, of course, 8-2 not too long ago against Turks Kakao. But uh, realistically, we've got to go with the quality. And I'm going to go with a 2-0 win for French Guyana over St. Martin. I just think they'll have too much on, on, on the plate here to go through to the finals. Now, speaking of those finals, what's going to go on over that one? We are going to come back for uh, a prediction to see how I got on. Make sure so you put your predictions in the, in the bottom here to see how you guys got on as well. But this, of course, will set up these big time finals. Of course, you're going to test me on my flag knowledge here. We've got Trinidad and Tobago. They're uh, in the first one. And I ain't no, I'm not going to be no closet fan. I'm going to come and tell you right here right now. I'm going to back TT uh, to go the distance. They're going to be taking on uh, Guyana. Difficult game, though. Very difficult game. Up against Martinique, who will be taking on Suriname. Another very difficult game. And then Curaçao uh, will take on French Guyana, which I think is, uh, you know, pretty, pretty much a one-sided game on that one. But we'll, we'll have to come back. We'll have to come back and see uh, what we say about that. But that, my friends, there I am. There I am. So uh, we're going to get back to the big old screen here. That's my take on the Gold Cup preliminaries. Of course, the Real Deal tournament takes place after this. Not too long after this as well. So uh, the teams uh, here in the qualifying phase will have a bit of uh, chances to pick up some momentum. A couple of wins on their belts. Might be able to steamroll into the Gold Cup on tip-top shape. That's my take. Let me know what your thoughts uh, are down below. Twitter, Twitch, Facebook. Of course, we've got a Discord as well. Smash those subscribe. We've got a lot of content coming at you. And a lot of plans are in place for the next season. We're building a realistic studio behind me. Even though it might be only for a season before we move into the bigger place. Uh, but of course, it's going to look sexy. Uh, of course, <laughs> you know, there's nothing, ain't, ain't that you, you know, that's all we do around here. Uh, hopefully, get some new graphics, new intros, new styles of prediction shows next season. So, all of that coming at you. So, what do you have to do? You've got to subscribe and, of course, hit the little bell. Uh, get more uh, subscri subscribers to constantly view the content. That's what we need. Uh, but, of course, that's enough about me. Until then, guys, I'll see you soon for the next one.